Hello and a very warm welcome to our service of worship here in St. Mark's on this Bible Sunday. The Lord be with you. Just as we begin our service, a number of things to draw to your attention. On All Saints Day, Monday the 1st of November, we'll be having a special service of worship here in St. Mark's. That will be at 7.30 p.m. and you're very welcome to come along to that service. It'll mark All Saints in the calendar, but it is also the first event uh, which St. Mark's and the Glen Community Church and the West Winds Community Church will come together and worship God. So we're very excited to be able to do that together. Another significant service in the coming weeks that you might consider attending is on the 7th of November at 6 p.m. That's a Sunday. And again, that's in St. Mark's and it's the Remembering Our Loved Ones service. Well, it's a very poignant and moving service. It's an opportunity for us to give thanks to God for those who are no longer with us, but whom we uh, love and miss very much. One final date for the diary, and that's this Wednesday, the 27th of October, as we celebrate half term and time off with children. Um, from 4 to 6 p.m., we'll be having an event for St. Mark's children and young people in Killy Nether Forest. And there's two things we'll be doing. We'll be doing a muddy trail. And then we'll be coming back after that to eat some hot dogs together. I always find Scrabble and Killy Nether a place of real good fun and adventure. So if you are free, um, please do book in, come along uh, to that event this Wednesday. Remember last year, at, during the lockdown, I went uh, a run in uh, Scrabble in that, that part of the, the world. I went and started on the old Belfast Road and I ran up the hill um, in the dark and it was raining as well uh, one evening and if, if truth be told I would have ended up in a ditch that evening if it hadn't have been for the torch on my phone. The torch on my phone was the thing that gave me my the, uh, an idea of what where to go with my next step. And a mile or so later, after step by step following the light, I stood at the top of Scrabble and looked out and could see for miles then. Often in life, things are a bit like my journey to the top of Scrabble. They're a bit confusing. It can be a bit of a struggle and we maybe look around and we don't understand what's going on or why things are happening as they are. And maybe even at some times in our lives we might think, you know what, I feel like I'm in the dark and that God is far away from me. I say today that the Bible is like a torch that lights our path in the darkness. Each step of the way, God will be there with us and he will help us. But the trouble is, we often take our eyes off God's word and we look around us and we get scared. Or we try to look ahead of us and we, we can't see that far ahead. God lights up one step at a time. At those times, we need to remember these words we can say together. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light on my path. As we celebrate Bible Sunday today, let us carry that torch of scripture with us every day to give us light for the next step. We begin by singing, Praise is Rising.
As we come today to confess our sins before God, we remember that the Word of God is living and active. It judges the thoughts and intentions of the heart. All is open and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we give account. And so we confess our sins in penitence and faith. Your word convicts us. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Lord, have mercy. Your word commands us, repent and believe the good news. Christ, have mercy. Your word assures us. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins, restore you in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now sing a, a children's favourite, Jesus Loves Me, This I Know, for the Bible tells me so. Psalm 19 speaks using really vivid imagery that helps us understand the work and the role and the importance of God's word in our lives. I invite you to say the words that are in bold. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The percepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and the, the, this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, 
Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Our scripture passage today comes in Mark chapter 10. And we begin to read at verse 46. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, Jesus said. Your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I wonder if you remember the first time you saw a Bible. Perhaps it sat on a shelf or a table at home for all the family to use. Perhaps it was a prize you got for Sunday school attendance or a gift at your confirmation. This is the very first Bible I remember. It's called the Children's Bible and it's not technically a Bible. It doesn't have all of the Bible in it, but it has events, stories, episodes from the Bible of interest, I suppose, particularly to, to children. And what I remember about it uh, is the pictures rather than actually reading it. And, and this picture in particular was one that fascinated me. It's the, the picture of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. And uh, it's got a picture of the devil in it. I always wondered what the devil looked like. So there he is. I remember the first Bible that was my own, I suppose, a gift from my parents not long after I become a Christian. It was a, a good news translation. So that kind of tells you when that would have been kind of around the mid 70s. It was the first modern translation that had uh, been uh, put together for a while. And it had those little black and white line drawings in it. I remember taking mine proudly to Bible class every week with me. There was also a little plan with it to help you read through the Bible in a year, reading a bit every day. Funnily enough, I don't remember actually using that. I remember when the Gideons came to our school and gave everybody a free copy of a New Testament with the Psalms. But I remember how I hid that Bible in my pocket, not daring to take it out in front of my friends who had thrown theirs away because it wasn't cool to be a Christian at school. What has your relationship with the Bible been like? Is it a book that sits on the shelf at home since forever, part of the furniture? You know where it is, but you couldn't tell the last time it was opened or somebody read it. Do you have a Bible in your bag or in your pocket that you take everywhere with you? Perhaps an app on the home page of your phone. Is the Bible something you make a point of reading every day or, or at least trying to? Or is it another one of those things in your life that you know you should do, like exercise or visiting your family, but you just can't quite find the time to do it? Whenever you see your Bible sitting there, does it make you feel guilty or useless because of all the times you've tried and failed to read it? And when you do read the Bible, 
What's that like? Is it like reading any other book? Interesting, useful, pleasurable even, but not essential. You wouldn't say it changed your life. Or does it leave you cold or puzzled or even frustrated because it's so hard to understand? And what it says is more and more out of touch with life today. I would say that all of these have described my relationship with the Bible over the years. And I wonder if it is the same for you and the rest of us. But what should our relationship be with the Bible? What should it mean to us? Why should it be worth reading? Well, Psalm 19 that we read together tells us that the Bible is how God makes himself known to us. And if we have found any peace or purpose or hope or healing from God, we will find all these and more as we read his word. Justin Delahaye writes this, The Bible is a message from the heavens, the transcendent God speaking to us on purpose, in words we can understand, giving us a message that can make us wise for salvation. In our pockets, on our coffee tables, we have God's love letter waiting to be perused or a feast waiting to be devoured. Not content with revealing himself through galaxies and other wonders of creation, God wanted to use words. And that is fitting for he's a God who speaks and he created us in his image. As human beings, we are word people. We can speak and be spoken to. We're capable of reading other people's minds and hearts and of sharing ours through the words we speak. Look at how King David describes God's word in Psalm 19. He uses six words for it. Law, statutes, precepts, commands, fear and decrees. These might sound dry or, or, or legal words, not very inviting. But the Bible isn't a list of do's and don'ts, something to catch us out or to tell us off or make us feel bad. From a commentary on this psalm, I read that the law of the Lord is everything God says and makes known. The whole of Scripture is God's law. And when we understand that Scripture is God personally revealing himself, then his law, his commands, even his orders become personal gifts to bless us. Paul writes in 2 Timothy that all Scripture is God-breathed. They're not simply words that God speaks. They are his words word. They express who he is. Just like you or I might say to someone, I give you my word on that. So God breathes his word over us, for us, into us. And that word is perfect, trustworthy. It is right, that is straight, not crooked. It is radiant, it is pure, and it is firm. Why? Because God is all these things. And then look at the difference, David says, that God's law makes to us. That Gideon's Bible I got at school had, a, had some pages at the front called Where to Find Help, with verses to read when you were anxious or, or feeling lonely or whatever. And that was the first time I realised that the Bible could actually be of help. But the message of the Bible isn't that God exists to sort out my problems. The value of God's word, what makes it precious, is that it gives us the right view of everything, every aspect of life, how God has made it all to be, his plan, his purpose for you and me and the whole of creation. God's word leaves us wanting for nothing. It's a wellspring of living water for our thirsty souls. It provides direction in times of uncertainty. It brings peace in the midst of trouble. It speaks with authority 
in a world with a billion opinions. It lightens our darkness that we might see. It is sufficient, pure, unfailing, consistent. That's why we should devour it like honey and treasure it like a stack of gold. God's word is not a set of stories like my old children's Bible or a series of moral lessons to live by, not even advice for living or, or a set of laws to keep in order to gain God's favour. God's word is one single story, the story of his promise of grace, mercy and peace to sinful people in Jesus Christ. It tells us no matter how many promises God has made, they are all yes in Jesus. So when we read the Bible, it is not simply information or history or poetry. The whole of Scripture testifies about Jesus. They point to Jesus. They lead to Jesus. Not information about Jesus, but as the Bible was uh, as the Bible reveals God, we see that God is pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Bartimaeus discovered this when he met Jesus. Jesus' miracle of restoring his sight was more than just a personal healing for him. Look at what Jesus says in John chapter 5. The works that I do, works like giving Bartimaeus his sight, testify that the Father has sent me and the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. How has God testified concerning Jesus? Through his word. The very scriptures, Jesus says, that testify about me. There's a chorus we used to sing back in the 70s that goes, Make the book live to me, O Lord, Show me yourself within the word. Show me myself and show me my saviour and make the book live to me. The book lives because it is about our living Lord Jesus. When Bartimaeus receives his sight, Jesus tells him your faith has healed you or saved you. When Bartimaeus told Jesus that what he wanted him to do for him is to make him see, he is putting his faith in Jesus, son of David. That's a title from the Old Testament for God's Messiah. So this man, this beggar who could not see a single thing, actually has the eyes of faith to see who Jesus is. And Romans 10 tells us, faith comes by hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Bartimaeus Here's the message about Christ, which is the message of the scriptures, the message of God's promise. And hearing the message, he receives faith, faith that makes him well. That's why David speaks about God's word as he does, as precious, desirable, life-giving. When we realise that God's word helps us to see his promises fulfilled in Jesus, so that we love and follow Jesus, that should make a difference to how we approach reading the Bible. If God has given us his word in a book, how should we respond? John Wesley, the, the 18th century evangelist and preacher, gives a good answer. He says, I want to know one thing, that is the way to heaven. And God has written it down in a book. Give me that book, at any price, give me the book of God. Because of what God's word is, reading the Bible should be enjoyable and not an endurance test. But there are no shortcuts. We need to deal with our own laziness, our lack of discipline, our embarrassment, our pride, the distractions of life. We live in a visual world which would rather look at the pictures than read the words. Our information culture of Twitter and Snapchat and Google says to, to skim, to skip, says fast, says self. Eric Raymond says, we have got to force ourselves or at least preach 
to ourselves to read for joy rather than simply information. To read with joy because we get to, not because we have to. There's no way around reading the Bible if we are properly uh, to value and enjoy God's Word. Bible reading plans, Bible apps are all helpful, but only if we are already reading. So, what might help us? Well, firstly, remember the example of Jesus. In his faithfulness to the Father's will, he had a love for the Scriptures. He turned to them to teach his disciples and to answer his enemies. It is Jesus' perfect loving obedience to the Father that earns God's favour to us by his grace. So Jesus' love for the Scriptures should drive us to read God's Word, not to gain God's favour, but to respond to the favour Jesus has earned for us. When we pray for one another as brothers and sisters, whatever else we might ask for, pray that we would have a good relationship with God's Word and be more disciplined and faithful in reading the Bible. Thirdly, don't go it alone, at least not completely. When we come together as church, we gather around God's Word to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest it with one another. One prayer of mine is that more and more in our time together as church, which includes our time over coffee, we would share God's word with one another. We would ask each other how we heard God in the service, what his word was saying, which isn't the same as talking about what we thought about the sermon. This shows that the Bible matters to us, that it is treasure, that it is God's love letter to us, that it is the good feast he sets for us. How about seriously considering making time during the week to come together in a small group with some other church members to read and study God's word, to be built up to follow Jesus, to grasp more and more of God's good promises? Megan Hill says, our private Bible reading depends more on other people than we realise. Finally, if you really want to make your ministers happy, tell them you want to do Bible study. Like Bartimaeus, let's say to the Lord, teacher, I want to see.
Let us affirm our faith in God by saying these words together. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. We Turn to God in a time of prayer now and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And as we think of Bible Sunday today, we pray to God. Lord God, we are very much aware that we have this treasure uh, that we, we often neglect in our Bibles. They are left unopened or read sparingly, Lord. Lord, we pray today that you would fill us with a hunger for your word. Make it be so that we are filled with an enthusiasm and a desire to read and study scripture together. So that we as your people become strong in the word, strong in our witness and more than anything, so that we, your people, know you better as you reveal us to yourself through your scriptures. Lord God, we pray that your word, as it is proclaimed in our land, would bring healing to wounds of old and hope of reconciliation for our children and our children's children. Lord, please inspire and empower your church in this task. Lord God, we pray for believers in countries where the Bible is uh, an illegal possession. We pray that as they hunger for your word, that they would be bold to share it with one another in creative and courageous ways. And that your word would strengthen and satisfy them in their faith and their struggle against the persecution they encounter. Lord God, we are mindful of those in need as well today. We ask that your word would bring strength and comfort to those who are ill or distressed or in any kind of turmoil at this time. We pray for those known to us as a church family praying today, lifting before you by name Elizabeth, Tom, Audrey, Stephen, Ken, Sydney, Adam, Mary, Bill, Evelyn, John, Helen, Doreen, Ryan, Sam, Terry, and Mandy. As we lift them by name, we also lift before you those known to us facing medical tests and procedures. We lift before you those known battling with mental health issues. If before you those grappling with brokenness in the family home. We left before you those facing stress in the workplace. And we left before you those in a season of grief. Lord God, stretch out your mighty hand across this earth today. Reach into those situations and into those hearts. Bring healing and hope and salvation, we pray. 
We pray together the collect for this Bible Sunday. Blessed Lord, you who calls, caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with us in worship today on this Bible Sunday. I just want to pray for you. I want to pray a blessing over you. So now go in peace, knowing that you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but imperishable seed, through the living and enduring Word of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. And we conclude our uh, sung worship today by singing out together, Tell Out My Soul. Yeah.